Hello, darlings, and welcome back to the channel. My intros are so cringy, so do not make fun of me. Intros are always so cringy, even after years of doing this. I don't know why, okay? I just don't know why. <laughs> ah, we are doing a September 2022 sign horoscope video. I hope you guys are excited. I am excited. Uh, I cannot wait. I'm so excited to be doing this right now. We have a Mercury retrograde this month. We have the last Mars, or not Mars, I'm sorry, the last Uranus-Saturn square ending this whole huge cycle we've been going through for the last couple years in some area of our lives. And so yeah, I hope these horoscopes turn out good and I don't end up sounding like a robot with my Aquarian moon and all that coming through. Um, I'm either very Aquarian and just like chill and boring or I'm very Leo fabulous you know and so <laughs> I tried to do some of these once already and they were just so boring and lifeless I was like I am not posting this this is just disgusting we cannot do it um so here we are back again I would really appreciate it for the energy flow for the energy exchange if you could please 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 like this video comment down below send this video to everyone you know that rhymes <laughs> and share it on social media so let me know what you think give me your feedback I want to hear it please it would really mean a lot to me and uh yeah with that all being said i think that's it uh i do have some really cool special things coming up some of them are free this month so if you would like to be a part of those things you really want to make sure that you're following me on some of my socials or at least subscribe to my email list all of that is linked down below so i post a lot on instagram and on my facebook page uh like my actual facebook profile tawny michelle on facebook and then i I have my quantum she facebook group all of that's linked down below that is where you're going to be updated or if you are in my email list you will be updated uh, on the things that i do as well so anyways with that being said let's go ahead and get into these readings i'm so so excited your rising sign will resonate most but you may find some messages in your sun or moon sign readings as well so just watch all three why the f not you know like just just do it if you want you know who cares like we can break the rules around here i am all for breaking the rules so anyways let's go ahead and get into it Alrighty, starting with you my lovely virgos i just want to take a minute okay to say happy birthday if you are a virgo sun okay but even if you're not if you're a virgo rising virgo moon Virgo sun, I want to take a minute to really freaking deep down from the bottom of my heart, from the bottom of my soul, to say that you are fucking appreciated. Like, you are so freaking appreciated, and I know there are times in life where people may take that for granted, and I know that I have, and that's how I, that's how I know this. I know that I have, you know, and I, I have some planets in Virgo as well, but like, you are so deeply appreciated, and I really hope that this month of September really shows you how to deeply find that appreciation in your own self in your own being you do so much for other people the virgo archetype is one of service to others is one of serving right but what a lot of people don't talk about with virgo is the fact that especially if you have a virgo rising that service of self has to come first you cannot give for from an empty cup and i know you probably hear that all the time right but the point the fact of the matter is is that you can't when you are on empty and you're trying to squeeze out what little you have left for others, which yes, makes you an amazing freaking person that you are so deeply committed and that you care so deeply to help others, to serve others, to fix everyone else's problems, right? But when you are doing that from a place of empty, you are going to feel that. You're going to feel that in your system and your system is going to respond in ways that are just like dissonance, right? Like it's just going to feel contracting and eventually you're going to get pulled back to focus on you. And I think a lot of what you were learning in August is leading up to this lesson in September as well of really getting back to yourself and really getting back to your own vitality, your own energy with the sun traveling through your sign so this is a time of amazing new beginnings that can happen and I also feel like for Virgo risings you're really going to be getting really into self-improvement and probably exploring new belief systems if you're not already new philosophies you know new learning material new educational ventures that are really helping you to get to know who you are on a deeper level and to get to know yourself 
right? You do so many things for others that can often go unseen or unacknowledged because they're the small everyday things that other people kind of take for granted, right? It's the taking the trash out. It's the doing the dishes. It's the, you know, here, let me solve this, this problem for you. Let me fix your flat tire. Let me give you another way of looking at this, whatever the case may be. And you guys are masterful at these things and just truly it is an art. But when you can't do those same things for yourself, you're giving from empty again, right? And so, and also I think that this month is is asking you to dive into a deeper emb embodiment because you do have a lot to give, but if you're giving from a place of not being embodied in it yourself, right? Like if you're, you know, giving people advice, but you're not embodying that advice, that can start to feel a little weird in your system that can start to feel like you know, that can create issues obviously right and so with venus traveling through your sign as well there's going to be a large focus on self-love self-care your appearance maybe you're going to want to switch up your wardrobe switch up your style you know this is a beautiful time to set new intentions and to start doing new things for yourself and to really dive in to your health right this is a time of kicking it back into gear who are you what what's working for you and what isn't how do you see yourself uh what how are the what are the ways that you're taking care of yourself and your body right now and if there are kind of you know leaks in these areas then they're going to come up you know you could get sick or something to get you to kind of slow down and realize how to take care of yourself even better right um but that may not be for all of you, but if there are insecurities that come up, these are coming up to show you how to love yourself harder and what needs your love and attention rather than picking it apart or thinking that it's a flaw or something like that, right? So you really need to fill your own cup back up and to really focus on you, to serve yourself first. This is about serving thyself this month for Virgo and really improving yourself in these areas within yourself that are lacking a little attention, right? And so that is like the, the main thing this month. Now, where some challenges can come up is that you may have a lot going on in the work department with Saturn in your sixth, Mars in your 10th, which will try and Saturn in your sixth. You know, you could have a lot of daily tasks, daily duties, a lot of things in terms of work, but also you're looking at the bigger picture of are the things that I'm doing with work on a day-to-day -day basis really adding up, really giving me the momentum in my life of where I want to go? And so you could be really looking at different options and exploring different options in terms of career success, uh, in terms of your future goals and the direction, your life direction. And so there could be some things coming up that, you know, could be challenging you in terms of taking care of yourself. And so this month is really about finding that balance of taking care of thyself, knowing thyself, serving thyself versus your, your worldly success, the things that you want for your life, your life direction, your public image, your career, authority figures, work and your daily tasks, et cetera. Now, I really see you guys, Virgo, really delving into a new, like, a new philosophy, a new belief system, a new educational pursuit that is going to feel deeply liberating and that is going to feel very unique and different and kind of outside of the norm, but that gives you a sense of purpose within yourself with a lot of these Virgo planets trining or beginning to trine uh, Uranus in your ninth house, right? And so this is really bringing up, you know, the things that you want to do. Like it's really exploring your belief systems and helping you understand yourself on a deeper level and helping you understand a lot of different facets and aspects of yourself. Or it could just feel really good, right? It could just feel really good to you. It could feel like a, a new beginning for you. And so I think another big thing that I really see coming up for you for this month, Virgo, is that you could have a lot of opportunities, prospects, uh, you know, different, uh, you know, different invitations, different uh, communications involving finances and money and energetic exchanges, right? And the, these things could possibly coming up from the past with Mercury retrograde in your second house of Libra. So this is really like 
uh, asking some deeper questions of your, your beliefs about money, the way that you see money, your individual vision and purpose with money and finances, you know, versus collaboration with others and, you know, uh, shared resources and finances with others. So I really see that this could be possibly something that you guys are getting into. Now, I do actually have my Money Codes program that I ran last month in August that you can get. Uh, that was such a really powerful program on shifting your beliefs and uh, learning how to energetically manifest money into your life. So if that's something you're interested in, it's linked down in the description below. You can still get it. Uh, so yeah, but I really see you guys working with a lot of your individual beliefs on money and finances and really reevaluating how you go about money and uh, how you also view, you know, your val like what you put value in, what's important to you, your priorities, right? And this could really involve others as well as you have Libra in your second house in some way. So some other things I really see here is that there is like a really long-term focus. You're starting to think out into the future. You're starting to put energy into the things that you want for your future, or at least thinking about the things that you want for your future. And you're definitely exploring different options with this. Uh, there could also be some energy that comes up financially as well with giving and receiving. So like I was kind of saying before, you know, there could be some deals, contracts, negotiations, or opportunities uh, involving finances in September for sure. But I really feel like this is the start of really big changes in your life direction because Mars is in your 10th house. It's going to be here for the next several months because it's going to retrograde here. And so this is a massive energy that's pulling you in a new direction or at least causing you to like possibly pivot or rearrange the direction that you're already going in. And so this is asking a lot of big questions about the bigger picture of your life, your purpose, your direction, etc. And so these are like the the really big astrological things that I see happening for you in the month of April, Virgo. We also have the Saturn Uranus square happening from your sixth house to your ninth house. So this is really bringing up a lot of beliefs that you have, morals, values that you have, uh, you know, worldviews, things like this, um, and some kind of challenge with your day-to-day -day work, you know, the responsibilities of your day-to-day -day work and your day-to-day -day schedules, tasks, health, etc. So in some way, these things, there could be a breakthrough in these two areas of life or in one of the areas of life um, that you start seeing around mid to end month of September. So definitely let me know how that works out, Virgo. And that is what I'm seeing for you guys for the month of September. Really make sure that you are filling your own cup, taking care of yourself, that you are serving yourself, you know, and I think that through the month, as long as you're doing those things and remembering those things and, and learning new ways to do those things, that it's going to be very, very beneficial for you. Because then from that place, you actually are overflowing. You have so much that you want to give to others, that you want to help others, that you're giving from a full cup and what you're giving has that much more value, right? And so anyways, thank you guys so, so much for watching Virgo. Please comment down below and let me know if this resonated with you. As always, I would really, really love to hear your feedback. And uh, yeah, I will see you guys in the next one. Libra, welcome to your September 2022 astrology reading. I hope you guys are doing well. So for the month of September, Libra, I think that kind of just like I said for Virgo, there's a lot of taking care of yourself this month. There's a lot of reevaluation with yourself as Mercury is going to retrograde in your first house. And so you are really going to start seeing different sides of yourself and you're going to start reevaluating how you see yourself and how you relate to others in terms of who you are and, you know, where others may somehow uh, kind of influence who you are, right? And so I think a lot of this is coming up with Mars and Gemini too in your ninth. So you're going to be very opinionated or there may be people around you that are very opinionated uh, over the next several months with Mars in your ninth house. You may be studying new educational pursuits, new belief systems. You may be traveling. You're opening your higher mind in some way and you're learning a lot about yourself through the process. And so I would say this isn't like the best time to be too one-sided about something. So what I mean by that is like you may think that you believe in something so strongly, right? And that that thing is the ultimate truth. But with Mars and Gemini, it could change. And with Mercury retrograding in your sign, that could change. And it could cause a bit of... Uh, 
discomfort within yourself because you could be thinking I thought this way for so long or I believed in this thing for so long and I almost like attached my identity to it I almost attached my identity to thinking this way right and so there could be a lot of questions coming up about your purpose and what do you believe what's true for Libra what's true for you right especially if you're a Libra rising like what feels true for you and where have you been maybe holding things in or not exactly living in your truth in some way and so this month can feel very introspective where you're really doing a lot of questioning of yourself your beliefs the world and what you how you see the world how you view the world um you know but it can also be very exciting where maybe you're embarking on new learning endeavors that's something that i definitely would suggest if you are feeling a little lost in terms of who you are and all of that then this is a really great month to like learn new things that help you almost like see yourself in new ways right and so there could be a lot coming up i think in terms of the relationship with yourself and how you perceive that relationship right so i really think that the relationship with yourself needs to be first and foremost like front and center um, because anything else that happens uh is not going to be all the way aligned if you're not aligned and this is something i've been talking about a little bit like on social media and you know realizations that i've had throughout the year is that when i am not like 100 percent solid within myself anything i do from that place like my life starts becoming unaligned because i'm making decisions from an uncertain place within me where i'm not aligned with myself so i start making decisions that are not aligned because i'm not aligned right like they're coming from this unaligned place or this confused place right it's like it's like maybe you're a creative person but you know your family wants you to be like this big shot doctor right and but you're not aligned with yourself you're not really tapped into who you really are and what what's really good for you so you follow your family's you know advice and guidance and you know their pressure on you and become a doctor and then you realize later on like this is not who i am like this is not what i want this is not what i you know and you have this kind of like <laughs> this like crisis because it's like why did i even you know do this this isn't like totally not me right like and so that's what i mean like if you're not aligned within who you are if then any other decisions you make from that place can at times i mean not every decision but there can be a lot of decisions that you're making or that you're weighing out that may not even matter because they're not really true to who you are right and so these are some of the things that you could see coming up in the month of september libra and i really think that you could also see like old habits coming up september can be a really big month for healing for libra risings especially because venus your ruling planet is in your 12th with the sun so this is like you know what's like your your vitality needs a rest right like you need to pull back a little bit you need to go within you need to uh spend plenty of time on rest and healing and really getting meticulous and detailed about the things that help you heal the things that help you surrender the things that help you let go and releasing old habits releasing subconscious habits and maybe having like a, a certain structure or fitting it into your day-to-day -day routines that can really help your body your health your healing all of those things so this is is really a month of, of getting to know yourself like getting to know yourself on new levels and re-evaluating what you think your belief systems your bigger life you know purpose your bigger life story your bigger life lesson your you know where what feels purposeful for you in life right what feels true for you in life and so this can also be a month though just uh some other things is like you could be learning and studying higher thought forms uh or philosophies that like i said really help you understand yourself better you could be re-evaluating your perspectives and beliefs um you know on different things and one of those things that you could be kind of re-evaluating is your perspectives and your beliefs on your relationships because mercury is going to be opposite jupiter on and off throughout the month in your seventh and so there could be really like conversations and different interactions that bring up opportunity within your relationships and within yourself uh, that cause certain breakthroughs or new perspective shifts within you and within your relationships, right? Like you could be really seeing how you perceive certain relationships or your beliefs about relationships or how you relate to other people, your dynamics within relationships in new ways that you weren't seeing them before. 
So like I said, uh, just be open because there can be a lot of like belief changing, opinion changing that's happening here. You know, you may be thinking one way about something and then the next thing you know, you're like thinking the total opposite. Uh, so with the Mars and Gemini transit and Mercury retrograding in your sign. So, you know, you want to just be open to all sides here, right? You're a Libra rising. You can do that. So just be open to all sides. And, you know, from there, you find your middle truth, right? You find what's true for you. And something I also want to say is, you know, with this energy, there can be debates, there can be strong opinions that form. And so you do want to kind of watch out for those things as well, because again, you may change your mind or you may see it in a different way that you weren't seeing it previously, right? And so uh, those types of things can come up. Mars in the ninth can also bring up legal situations, travel, teaching, learning, things like that. So those are some other topics you could be seeing really come up in the month of September. But you could also have some, you know, big psychological breakthroughs this month where you really break free of some old subconscious patterns that have been hindering you or holding you back in terms of how you value yourself and, uh, you know, what you have and, and holding you back in terms of healing and things like that as well. So that is what I am seeing for you, Libra. I think it's like, again, how can you take care of yourself this month? How can you really, you know, see yourself from these new sides, see yourself from these new angles and really like understand like when you're ready to speak your truth, like being really certain that that is what you believe and that's your truth, right? But also leaving room for polarity, leaving room for other truths, other other things to be true, like being in a place of of neutrality, but also knowing who you are, right? And not allowing uh, you know, certain beliefs to dictate who you are as a person, right? So those are a lot of the big things that I see coming up for you in the month of September, Libra. Definitely let me know down below if this resonated and was, if, if there was anything in here that you needed to hear, I would really love to hear your feedback. Uh, make sure to follow me on social medias if you don't to keep up with everything that I do, uh, everything else that I do. I love you guys and I will see you guys in my other videos. Scorpio, welcome to your September 2020 to astrology reading for the month ahead. So Scorpio, last month in August was likely a pretty big month for you. You were probably like just doing a lot of rebranding. There were probably like a lot of shakeups in terms of your career and your public identity, your public image, you know, the, the message that you put out there to the world, you know, what you want to do in terms of your life and just really rethinking and, you know, going through a lot in terms of, you know, finding that authority within yourself and putting yourself out there, being seen and really, you know, possibly like doing some rebranding, like whether that's like literal or in terms of what you want Want your life to look like right and so now as we go into september one of the big things i wrote down for you guys is like september means biz <laughs> september means business and so you could be going into september like i mean business i am not here to play right like there is a lot going on and what i really feel for you guys about the month of september is there's a lot of strategy and uh strategic things coming up within your life within possibly like work business your public image your audience your target audience the the people and social atmospheres that you're in, the social groups that you're a part of. There could be a lot of networking, marketing happening, you know, with all this Virgo energy in your 11th house. And so you could really be thinking about who you connect with and, and who your audience is. If you are, you know, if you do something pertaining to an audience, you know, who you're selling to, if you're in sales, right? Like who your clients are, but also like the, you know, even if you're not in any of that, if your job has to do with none of that, this could also be like, what are you doing? Um, in terms of or, or what's going on in terms of your friendships, your alliances, acquaintances, the different groups that you belong to, like-minded groups that you belong to, you know, things like this could really be a huge topic for September. Now, something else that I do want to say, though, is that Mercury is going to be retrograding in your 12th house. Now, Mercury rules your 11th house of, you know, social networks and stuff. So there could be some things going on behind the scenes in some of these areas as well, or even some hidden issues 
times with friends, acquaintances, friend groups, things like this, social groups, or you could just be working on something behind the scenes to do with these things. Like, you know, maybe behind the scenes, working on your marketing, working on your networking, working on the, the kind of like-minded individuals that, you know, you, you connect with, you know, things like this, whether online, in person, through a yoga class, like whatever the case may be. Um, you know, the 11th house and your 10th house, like recently being activated can also be like companies, organizations, you know, things like that, like uh, topics surrounding those things could be coming up as well. But I, I really see you kind of reorganizing your social life in, in some way, right? In some way, shape or form. Um, another big thing that I really see that this could be is that there could be a level of insecurity within social situations or surrounding social situations that are coming up for you to kind of address, right? To you, for you to dive maybe even deeper into, you know, the, the impact that you want to have on people, your connections with people and your, your, you know, like your own confidence within these situations. So something else I really see coming up for you in September, Scorpio, is like, I feel like you're learning a lot more about finances, business, investing, you know, shared resources with Mars, your ruling planet in your eighth house. You're definitely, there's definitely a massive like force, like a massive energy that's coming in that's really pulling you towards like, you know, business and exchanges with other people and financial exchanges and shared resources, investing, you know, so you could be really learning a lot about finances, business, investing, these kinds of things that really could be helping you move forward uh, in some kind of way, which I think is, is pretty interesting, you know, and so <clears throat> this could be a lot of changes that are also coming up in terms of shared money shared resources, shared finances, any any resources or finances that you share with someone else uh, or ties, agreements, etc. that you have with other people involving shared resources or finances and things like that. So uh, another really big thing that we have happening this month, Scorpio, is we have the final uh, Uranus-Saturn square happening from your fourth house to your seventh house. And so this is definitely a time where a lot of the responsibilities, a lot of the personal, more personal matters, family matters, home matters, things like that, uh, past karma, childhood stuff, you know, things from the past that are possibly still weighing on you in some way. Um, you know, there may be like, they may cause a sudden breakthrough or change in terms of your relationships and partnerships. So there could be some breakthroughs coming in terms of your relationships or some liberation coming in terms of your relationships, you know, like maybe you want to be free, you know, maybe you want to be more free, experience more pleasure, you know, or it could just cause, you know, you taking a risk in a relationship in some way, or you upgrading the current relationship that you're in right now, right? So this could be like maybe finally letting go of some kind of responsibility within your family to like free yourself so you have more time with your partner or so you have more time for your relationships, right? Um, but I really see like, there could be some breakthroughs and changes in relationships in some way that comes back to your roots, your family, your home life, your personal life, your past and things like that. And another thing that this could possibly be is you seeing really what's holding you back in life. And so the way that I'm looking at kind of Saturn in your fourth house is it's like an anchor, like you're like a ship and Saturn's like an anchor, right? And it's like, you're ready to set, you're ready to sail, right? You're ready to set sail, but you have some heavier personal matters that are weighing you down, that are holding you back. And this could be old conditioning, right? Conditioning that from the past or past experiences that have told you, if you do this, then this will happen, or you can't do this, or you can't do X. So you could be facing a lot of old conditioning in terms of your family and your personal life and your roots and you know your family dynamics and things like that, that are just holding you back in life and not allowing you to be free, to do what you want, right? Maybe there's some family beliefs that, you know, Know, have to do with relationships or maybe you, like your family members don't like the person you're with or something like that and so this is kind of a time where you possibly finally decide like what you're going to do about this situation or you know how to break free of something that's been holding you down in your life you know and and you want more freedom socially you want to 
you know, kind of rebel or, you know, go through uh, some kind of change socially where you can be more authentic to yourself, where you can embrace your individuality, whether with relationships or just like, you know, putting yourself out there in general. But maybe you've had these like strong, heavy family matters where family responsibilities, home responsibilities, old responsibilities, old conditioning, whatever, holding you back. Uh, from the past, right? And so this can be a month that really starts to drudge these things up middle to end of the month that where you finally kind of break free, where you finally decide like, I'm not going to let this hold me back anymore. You know, something that I really talked about in my next level masterclass that I did during the summer, which was freaking amazing. It goes into quantum manifestation and it's just absolutely amazing. If you haven't seen that, it's on my channel, go check it out. But something that I really talked about is like this year is so expansive. And it's like you're a balloon, but you've had these weights tied to your string for so long that you thought you could only go this high. You thought you could only get to here. You thought you could only achieve this, right? Like that, that this was just enough and that's all you could do. And this year is like really going in and, and breaking off each one of those weights and you're just expanding and expanding and expanding. And you're like, damn, like how did I... <laughs> How did I get, I didn't know I could do this, right? Like I, I really was conditioned to believe or I was telling myself that I could only get to here and now I'm like way up to here. And so that's kind of the energy that I get with this. It's like, what are the weights that are holding you down? And a lot of those weights deal with your personal life, family matters, home matters, you know? And it's like, yeah, some of them, you know, are, are weights that definitely are a priority and definitely are healthy, right? Like it's good to have a stable home or a healthy nest or, you know, stable roots, like, because to grow, we need those roots in the ground to grow healthily, right? But uh, what roots that are planted are like rotted and need to go, right? And so that's where I think that you're finally breaking free from things that have gotten unhealthy that have been holding you back, things that are no longer aligned with really who you are that are holding you back. So you can finally expand and, and go into, you know, the to, to, to achieve the level that you're meant to achieve in life. And I feel like last month in August was a huge month that was very much about that for you, like really showing you what's holding you back in terms of yourself, in terms of your personal life. And, you know, it's causing major breakthroughs in terms of your life socially and within your relationships. And so um, now this could go the other way where there's some, you know, changes in your relationship that cause, you know, a like increased responsibility or increased, uh, you know, an increased buckling down in terms of your personal life, your home, family, etc. So that's another way that it could go too. But I, I really feel like with this being the last square that there is this kind of, you know, there's this ending here that is actually like beneficial and it really wraps up all of the lessons that you've learned thus far with this square to begin with, right? And so, and you've been through this before, so this isn't something new and out of the blue, right? And so, um, yeah, so that is what I'm seeing for you, Scorpio. Definitely let me know down below if this resonated and if I said anything in here that you needed to hear, please feel free to come back throughout the month and uh, rewatch this to check back in as always. And and uh, yeah, I will see you guys in the next one. Sagittarius, darling, welcome to your September 2022 horoscope. I hope you guys are doing well. Uh, I'm sure you are with Jupiter in your fifth house if you're a Sag rising. This has been all the expansion and passion, love, sex, and pleasure, and all the things. So, um, <laughs> but yeah, but what I really see for you this month, Sag, I don't know why that Jupiter in your fifth just really is calling to me for September. And I'm really not sure why. And I, it could be because Mercury is opposing it. But I really feel this month, Sagittarius, that you are really asking yourself, like, how can you bring more of what you love, more passion, more fulfillment, like more of the things that give you zest in life, the things that make you feel like zing, you know, like how can you bring more of what you love to the world, to others? How can you like, you know, give these passions, give this like endless flow of creative energy running through you to other people, to the world, right? And so I think that those are big questions you could be asking yourself, but there could be a reevaluation starting in September of this because there may be certain opinions that hold you back, or you may be somewhat scared of what people are going to think in some way uh, about, you know, what it is that you love or what it is that you're passionate about. 
And I also really see this in terms of kind of you improving your brand or improving your career, improving your work, improving your, your public role in the world, uh, your public image, things like that with all this Virgo energy in your tent. So this is about really sorting out what's of value and what isn't in terms of your career and in terms of your public image, your goals, etc. And really seeing like what you want to keep, what adds to you, how can you do this more efficiently, more effectively actively, you know, how can you make things more useful? And so there's a lot of like almost like management energy going on in terms of your career, your brand and things like that. And on top of that, that's influencing others and really bringing in the 11th house of your, you know, how the the of the people that you influence through what you do in the world, right? Your social connections, your audience, your the like-minded people uh, that believe in what you're doing, you know, like the the people that you vibe with, the people that you're speaking to, clients, you know, things like this. So, um, or it could just be like your your online friends and acquaintances or your real life friends or, you know, certain groups that you belong to, like a yoga class or something, right? It can be some of that too. But I really see you trying to perfect your message and what you want to bring to the world uh, in the month of September. So let me know if you're, if you're seeing some of that already coming up here. But I also really feel like with this Mercury retrograde and your 11th, you're really viewing like you're really trying to find a balance in terms of your social life, the people in your life, the people you're calling in, the things that you're doing. Um, so there could be a reevaluation of your social life. There could be changes in your social life, your audience, your friend groups, you know, like-minded people that you, you know, interact with, things like that. You could be, this could be, it could be time to like, you know, rearrange your social media to uh, get rid of people that, you know, just don't inspire you or just are not aligned with what you're doing, right? So you could also find people that are aligned with what you're doing, with your passions, with the things that bring you joy in life and uh, things like that. So I, I really think that that's like a lot of the focus this month for you. But I really see you trying to reinvent the work that you're doing in the world, trying to reinvent your career, reinvent your day-to-day tasks and duties to reflect that in terms of your career, in terms of where you're headed in life, your direction in life. And so you're finding like unique and out of the box ways to add your own kind of, uh, your own kind of spin on the work that you're doing, which is just really, you know, that, that feels more authentic and that, you know, will inspire more people, right? Now, even more on the social end, you have Mars in your seventh house, you know, in September and it's in shadow now. So there's definitely going to be situations coming up in relationships that definitely could like ripple for the next several months. And so this can definitely bring up changes in relationships or, you know, relationships in some way that may be uh, not in alignment with what you're doing in terms of career and out in the world and things like that. So um, this really could also be bringing up, you know, like certain, like the, like what opinions you care about from other people, right? Like where maybe you are seeing things in different ways and, you know, and really reflecting on how you view yourself from the opinions of others. And so this could definitely be a big topic that's coming up for a lot of Sag Risings where it's like you, you want to put yourself out there and you want to do things that you love, but how are people going to take it? How are people going to view it? You know, like are people going to have strong opinions, you know, and, and things like that. And how do you face that in terms of, you know, if, if that were to happen, right? It's like, so these are definitely things that you could be reflecting on in the month of September. And, you know, something that I've really realized through my own journey of being online and stuff uh, when it comes to the opinions of others, which can definitely be a huge, huge part of putting yourself out there is that a lot of the times what we think others are thinking about us is not what we're actually thinking. It's like our own imaginary audience in our head. So we sit there and tell ourselves, oh, they're probably thinking this or no one signed up yet because of this or no one liked this yet because of this. Like, And we tell ourselves all these different things, but really these are our own securities. And when we can really recognize that and see that, we can start giving those insecurities what they need and do the work ourselves rather than wanting other people to fill that void or to give us some kind of validation, right? And so 
this definitely could bring up where you seek validation from others and in terms of what you do, whether from relationships or people online, etc. And so uh, just kind of be wary of that. But I do think this is a really great time to try new things in terms of relationships, you know, date different kinds of people. Um, you know, uh, if you're if you're single, you know, date different kinds of people, um, you know, get into, you know, making changes or, or spicing things up, finding more humor in your life and with other people, you know, and not taking things so seriously, uh, because it can be very easy to do that with Saturn in your third, you know, it can be very easy to kind of just take the Monday and everyday things very seriously and um, kind of miss out on fun and play, you know, and so uh, have more fun. Don't forget to play. Don't forget to let your inner child out this month and really work on those insecurities of what other people may think, uh, et cetera, right? Um, and this is really, this is a really good energy, Sag, for like, motivation, right? Motivating others, um, you know, maybe you even finding others that inspire you and motivate you and get you kind of moving and going, but like you can be that inspiration for others during this time as well. And if you're letting the possible thoughts of uh, other people that aren't aligned with you or aren't on the same page of you hold you back, then you're also missing out on the opportunity to be there for the people that are aligned with you that you could inspire and, and change their lives, right? So a lot of the times we focus on the, the the few people that don't agree with us rather than all the people that we could help, all the people that are a match to us, or all, all, all the people that will relate to us and that will be inspired by us. And so we're taking that chance away from, you know, from ourselves and others because we're so focused on the people that, you know, may not agree, right? And so just be weary of that this month and, you know, really work on those, you know, your own inner self-confidence. And with Venus in your 10th house, this can really help, but you do want to make sure you're not falling into this energy of trying to make your your public image, whether it's in your career or whatever, to make your public image perfect or something unattainable, right? Because that's really not what it's about. Don't be afraid to be human. Don't be afraid to be authentic, right? That is a really great way you can use Venus and Virgo is like being human and allowing your human side to show and not thinking you need to only present yourself as this perfect, pure, flawless person, right? Um, and yeah, like allowing yourself to be human, allowing, you know, showing your flaws and work on loving them, right? And that's a beautiful way that you can use this energy. So you you also could notice some major breakthroughs in your work, health, and day-to-day -day life as well, uh, where maybe there's some pressure, where there's some tension or heaviness in your day-to-day -day responsibilities or tasks or errands that's putting some pressure on your uh, you know, day-to-day -day work life, day-to-day -day health routines and things like that, right? So um, it could feel like you know, also some some mental stuff going on where maybe you have this certain mindset that's been holding you back and through maybe a new health routine or switching something up in terms of your your daily life and the, the task and duties and routines that you're in can really help kind of shake things up and break you out of maybe some old mental ways of thinking or some old, you know, um, some old mental patterns that you may have been stuck in. So that is what I'm seeing for you, Sagittarius. Let me know down below if any of that resonated and if these were messages you needed to hear for the month ahead, you're free to come back to this throughout the month and uh, check in. Definitely let me know down below what you thought and if it resonated, I would love to know. Thank you guys so, so much for watching. Don't forget to follow me on social media. Check out everything that I offer down below if you're interested and I will see you guys soon. Hello, Capricorn. Welcome to your September 2022 astrology forecast for the month ahead. I hope you guys are doing well. It's been a hot minute, uh, but this is for September. Like I said, let's get into it. I'm so bad at intros, but um, this month in September, Capricorn, I really see you going through and kind of rethinking your purpose, your career, your life direction, where you're going, or at least rethinking you know, maybe just, you know, how you're going about your career. Like it may not be like, oh my God, I need to change careers and change directions. It may just be like, maybe this position isn't the best for me, or maybe 
like I have this new goal that I want to achieve, right? Like it, it doesn't have to be super drastic, but there is a rethinking going on in terms of where you're headed in life, what you want out of life, your future, success, your goals, right? Like what you want out of your long term life, like what you want long term and your relationships and the relationships that you have in terms of, you know, establishing the life that you want, the goals that you want in terms of your career and things like that. And so you're really rethinking a lot of these things with the sun and Venus moving through your ninth house of higher thought forms, belief systems, education, things like this. You're you're really rethinking, you know, like what feels purposeful for me? Maybe you want to do something that helps others more. Maybe you want to travel more. Maybe you want to to learn something new. Maybe you want to take a course. Maybe you want to find a new teacher. Maybe you want to find a coach or maybe you want to be a teacher, right? Like, you know, all these different things could definitely be coming up or these different topics could be coming up for you where you are really thinking about how you relate to others in terms of this way and how others relate to you and what direction you want to go in. And so these are definitely some things that you could notice coming up. And then on top of that, you know, there could be some things going on in terms of your personal life and, you know, what you, what feels like you, like the foundations of what feels like you versus what you feel the world or your career expects from you. So this could be kind of a time where you feel this push and pull between, oh, I need to be, you know, doing this for my career, doing this for my goals, or, you know, doing, you know, speaking to these people for this thing where you're kind of focused on your outer world versus your inner world, your personal life, what's going on behind the scenes in your home with your family, you know, and, and are you really living your truth? Are you really expressing who you really are, uh, in your, in your professional life, right? Or is this something that you need to start doing in some way, right? So these are some other things that could definitely be coming up. Overall, though, I would say this month is not uh, super crazy for Capricorn Risings. Like, you really don't have uh, too much going on. It's kind of like a, a more chill month, I would say, other than the Mercury retrograde in your 10th. Um, but yeah, I think that you're really deepening into deeper levels of who you are and how to maybe express more of that in the world. Like, are you just expressing a certain side of you to kind of keep the peace or to because you're worried about the opinions of others or are you being really authentic and it are, are the the goals that you're trying to accomplish in your professional life or your long-term goals or that are they really aligned with who you are as a person right so you could also get into learning some new skills taking some courses new educational pursuits and i also think that this month in september is like a, a really big you know, some really big, a really big word that kind of came through was like your mental hygiene, right? Like, are you taking care of yourself on a day-to-day -day level mentally? Are you doing things for yourself that really help your mind? Because Mars is in your sixth house and it's going to retrograde here very soon. It's going to be here for several months. So this is going to be about really changing your mindset around your work, your job, your day-to-day -day task, your your day-to-day -day duties, like your 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 health routines, like the, the work that you do on a day-to-day -day basis to like take care of yourself, right? Like the sixth house basically rules hygiene. And so with Mars in Gemini and your six, this is basically your mental hygiene in a lot of ways. Like, yeah, it can be somewhat of your physical hygiene too, but like what habits do you have that are kind of working against you or kind of like not really helping you? And, and how can you get on top of these things, right? So Mars does really, really well in the sixth house though. So I think that this is like really a time where you can really overcome a lot of like mental baggage or mental chatter or just like old mindsets that like no longer work for you or that have been holding you back, right? So this is really about taking care of your mind and taking care of the way that you think about things, your mindset. That, right and this is really kind of going into uh you know this this virgo energy as well because you could find that you know maybe you need to rearrange your beliefs right maybe you need to pay more close attention to what you believe and how that's driving your your mind on a day-to-day -day basis right or you know maybe you are getting too caught up in like you know worldly issues or whatever that it's too, like like you know really weighing on your mental health and your day-to-day -day life and your day-to-day -day routines and your day-to-day -day task or something like that right so this is really getting on top of your mind like getting maybe getting into like mindset work or something like that could be like highly beneficial around this time 
So, or this could also be about like incorporating your morals, your values, your beliefs into your work and day to day, right? Like are your beliefs, like do you practice what you preach basically, right? So this could be a really good time of really noticing where there may be like a dissonance there that you can really kind of mend and integrate, right? So yeah, Capricorn, I really feel like those are the, the big things that I see for you coming in September. But something else that uh, is happening is we have this last Saturn Uranus square happening from your second house of money and what's valuable to you, what's important to you, your priorities, your finances, like what you own, what you have, like, you know, the, the things that make you feel safe, like your needs, right? Where there could be like a, a challenge or some tension or pressure happening um, in terms of those areas of life versus your fifth house of children, pleasure, fun, dating, sex, you know, leisure activities. So, you know, you could be really feeling just free living in, um, like having a lot more fun and experiencing a lot more pleasure and doing things that, that really make you feel good and joyful, joyful, or, you know, doing things that make you feel liberated and really tapping into your passions and your hobbies and things like that. But maybe, you know, there is, you know, something happening financially that you have to kind of take a look at, right? Or maybe there's been something financially that you've been working on that finally causes a breakthrough where you're able to have more fun, you're able to enjoy yourself more, you're able to to find more pleasure in your life, right? So it could go kind of either way. It just really depends. Um, so yeah, and then, you know, we also have, oh, I already talked about that, the Jupiter and Aries transit in your fourth house. So yeah, I think it's like a lot of your personal life versus your professional life. Um, and then also what you're doing on a day-to-day -day basis and how that uh, is affecting you at large in your life as well, right? So those are the big things that I really see for you, Capricorn. Like I said, you don't really have too much going on um, this month. And, you know, like your your real big houses aren't really being lit up other than the Mercury retrograde in your 10th, which definitely is going to cause like a rethinking in terms of your career and your direction in life and your public image and how you present yourself to the world or how you present yourself to other people, your like your professional relationships with others and things like that. So there definitely will be like a, a rethinking or a redoing effect coming with those types of things. So definitely watch out for that. But that is what I'm seeing for you guys, Capricorn. Capricorn, let me know down below if this was helpful, if this resonated, feel free to come back throughout the month uh, if you would like to, just to kind of rehash. And uh, yeah, if you would like to follow me on socials to keep up with me, do that down below. And uh, I also offer a ton of different stuff, so you can check that out down below as well. I will see you guys in the next one. Bye! Aquarius, hello, and welcome to your September 2022 astrology horoscope for the month ahead. I hope you guys are doing well. It feels so good to be back. So Aquarius, August was probably like a major month for you. So I would really love to know down below like what happened in August because August was a huge month. I really wish I could have gotten to these horoscopes for August, but I was going through my own like crazy stuff. So I would really love to know what happened. But like, I really feel like you guys probably had some major relationship upheavals, um, possibly some like crisis in relationships. Who are you in terms of a relationship? Or, you know, maybe some of you went through some separations or got into new relationships, or maybe there were just a lot of changes in terms of your relationships. But either way, I definitely feel like you guys probably went through a lot in terms of relationships last month and then also in terms of maybe like your home life your family you know your personal life and things like that right and so um definitely let me know down below if that was the case for you as an Aquarius rising um but what I really see for you coming into the month of September which is a lot more chill than August but we do have a Mercury retrograde is I really see you guys trying new things there's really this energy of a for Aquarius of like trying new things and a adapting to new situations that may be a little different or may be a little out of your comfort zone, but maybe fun, like in exciting and like weird ways. And you may connect with different people than you're really used to. And so this can be really, really good for you if you get into this energy of like having fun, trying new things, really exploring different hobbies, different passions, different talents, different skills, because why not, right? Like who cares if you may not be good at it or if you may not end up liking it, like at least you tried it, right? Like Mars is in your fifth house. So this is very much about trying new things and just being open, being adaptable, like being able to kind of just, you know, try something here and there. You don't have to master it, right? Gemini is not about becoming a master at it. It's about 
jack of all trades, right? Like, so learn your trades, right? Like learn your trades, learn what, and, and through that you may find a lot of new interesting insight and inspiration that lights you up. You may meet new people, you may find new passions, you know, all kinds of different things. So really, really just dive into that energy this month. Like, don't be afraid to take some risk in terms of having fun and leisure activities, right? Like, and you may not need to go very far. You may not need to like, it just may be different, small, different things that can make such a huge difference for you this month, Aquarius. So another big thing that I really see coming up for you in this month of September, Aquarius is that you may start really perceiving unfairness in the world like you may start really noticing things that seem unfair to you in the world or in situations um, you know like it, it can really be any in such any situation but they may be bigger situations moral issues you know belief clashes like you know things like that things to do with education things to do with politics things to do with like worldly beliefs or your place in the world or like other people you know like there definitely can be some of that with mercury retrograding in your ninth so what you usually believe or what you think you know from experience could be getting questioned this month with this mercury retrograde you could really start you know looking at situations that may seem unfair to you at first or may seem not right to you or may seem like you know a um a moral issue to you and you can start really looking at it differently once mercury goes retrograde right you can start seeing a different side of it seeing other sides of it seeing other people's sides of it right and your experiences in your day-to-day -day life can also really start changing your perspective um, in terms of your bigger belief systems and what how you see things in the world and how you see things on a larger scale what you believe in and also what you find purposeful because this can be a lot about what you find purposeful in your life what you find fulfilling in your life right and so you may find that something else catches your interest and feels more purposeful for you in some regard right you may get a new perspective from somebody else or through you know something that really just kind of shifts how you are viewing things in life and really kind of brings in this like fresh new way of looking at things and and it can really create a pretty big impact you know so that is really what I kind of see with this Mercury retrograde for you. And, you know, Mercury will go back into Virgo in your eighth house as well, um, which is more about your finances, more about your financial exchanges, shared resources, you know, things like that. So those things can come up as well. So, but I really feel like this month Virgo is about, you know, finding your passions by trying a little bit of everything, right? Um, and then, like I said, you know, worldly events or other people's opinions that may change your uh, perspective or may oppose your own beliefs and experiences, but they could be opportunities leading to a different perspective that could really make a huge difference. So you may also be inspired to learn from others or to, you know, take on some kind of new learning endeavor, new educational endeavor, get a teacher, you know, something like that, that really uh, also helps you in some way. And I think that you could also be very into like voicing your opinions a lot more, but just be wary of this because you could voice your opinions, but then your beliefs could change, your opinions could change. So just be kind of uh, on the lookout because with this Mercury retrograde, something's definitely being reevaluated in terms of your views on life and your views on the world, your views on politics, your views on all kinds of things, right? And so um, just be kind of aware of that. But with this Virgo season, you know, the sun and Venus are moving through your eighth house. So this is definitely a time where you could be budgeting, where you could be, you know, really getting into the nitty gritty, the details of your finances, your financial goals, investments, you know, energy exchanges, you know, with you and someone else or you in an institution or you in a company or whatever the case may be. You could just be really sorting out like what's a value to you financially and what's not, you know, what bill do you need to pay off and get rid of? What debts do you need to get rid of? Like what, what needs to be organized here in terms of your money and in terms of investing, in terms of your business, if you have a business, you know, in terms of how you want to move forward financially in your life and your goals financially, right? So these are some of the, the big topics that you could really see coming up. And other than that, you could also notice uh, some, some, possible breakthroughs happening in terms of your home and family, um, in terms of your personal life, in terms of, you know, maybe you 
maybe you're realizing like that you are taking on too much responsibility in terms of your home, your family, you know, in some way, or in terms of your living situation, or maybe you've been holding yourself back or expecting too much of yourself in a situation. And so this energy could like finally have some kind of breakthrough with it this month if you've been feeling that way for a little bit now. So you could have somewhat of a breakthrough in terms of home and family with this last Saturn Uranus square happening from your first house to your uh, fourth house. So just kind of be aware of that too. But with that being said, Aquarius, that is what I am uh, really seeing for you. You know, I think also really quick, I want to say that, you know, I'm a Leo rising, so I'm opposite of you guys. But what I've really, I'm going to kind of compare what I've noticed and flip it for you guys is that you may be really saying that to get where you want to go in life, right? To have the kind of impact you want to have, to get to success, to have the kind of professional life, career, whatever, your life goals that you want to have, you may have these things going on behind the scenes or this old conditioning from the past or these old things that are kind of holding you back. And so this is really a time of like securing your foundation so you have that foundation to stand on, to rise as high as you wanna go, right? That's really what it's about here with you know the North Node in your fourth and Uranus in your fourth and really breaking free uh, in a lot of ways um, from you know old structures, old conditioning that just no longer serves you on what you think you can and cannot do in life, right? And so this is like a huge part of it, I feel like for Aquarius, risings where you're really like seeing where you may hold yourself back and you've had to grow up and mature a lot with Saturn in your sign for the last few years right and so this is definitely a time of like where you can really step into your power if you can really decondition if you can really shed those old layers and create a solid pleasurable consistent foundation, you know, a stable foundation for yourself, right? So a lot of Aquarius risings may be wanting to lay down roots, you know, wanting to, you know, pay off their house, you know, things like this. And so, yeah, so let me know down below Aquarius, if any of that resonates with you. As always, I would love to hear your feedback. I would really appreciate it. Uh, don't forget to follow me on socials to keep up with me and all of the other things that I do outside of this. <laughs> and uh, if you'd like to get a reading or anything, all of that's linked below. Thank you so, so much for watching and I will see you guys in the next one. Alrighty, Pisces darling, welcome to your September 2022 tarot, or not tarot, sorry, not doing tarot in this one, astrology for the month ahead. So Pisces, this is a month that is extremely about reflecting on what's fair, what's equal in terms of the people in your life. Are you giving too much? Are you sacrificing too much? Are you making huge sacrifices that are coming back to bite you for the people in your life? This month is really about reflecting on your energetic exchanges, whether that be financial, whether that be just you doing a lot for others, doing a lot for a relationship or the people in your life, doing a lot for friendships, you know, whatever it may be, it's like an energetic exchange reflection in uh in a lot of different ways you're really reflecting on what's equal what's fair are you getting the short end of the stick right like are you getting the shit end of the bargain here you know and so this month is really about finding a way to make things feel fair in your system because if you are over exhausting yourself if you are sacrificing so much of your own energy and your own shit <laughs> for other people you're going to eventually feel burnt out you're going to eventually feel like you're running on uh, an empty tank like you don't have much more to give like you're on an empty cup right and so if you begin feeling that way in the month of september i would really ask yourself where you are maybe you know giving too much in your life where you are giving too much of your energy right uh, and not really receiving anything back now you can also say that you could really be reflecting on your intentions behind giving in the first place because if you're always giving and expecting something in return that can also really kind of set you up right it can kind of set you up to feel frustrated or to feel unseen or to feel like things aren't fair um so this is a month that really is is 
so much about the energetic exchanges in your life with Mercury going retrograde in your eighth house in Libra and it ruling your seventh house and going to retrograde back into your seventh house of relationships. So this is a, a huge month that is about relationships and the give and take within relationships, the energetic exchanges within relationships, financial matters within relationships, you know, um, and if you feel like those things are fair right now. Totally forgot to plug in my mic, so sorry about that. The audio may change a little bit, Pisces, but so this is a month about getting very, very detailed and very, very discerning about what's yours and what's not, right? What's your responsibility and what's somebody else's responsibility, right? And so you may see a lot coming up with these kinds of topics in the month of September. And also you could see uh, topics of, you know, money that's owed to you versus money that you owe to others or things that you feel you owe to others or things that you feel others owe to you, right? Kind of like I was saying before. So where are you sacrificing yourself you know like and is it necessary and is it what you really want right and is it leaving you feeling empty so these are like the big things i think that you're going to be kind of seeing come up if you're not already seeing them come up in the month of september pisces so on top of that we also have mars in your fourth house still so mars is really bringing up possibly a lot of focus change or you know topics in terms of your home life your personal personal life, your family, your family dynamics, who's saying what, who does what, what role people play, you know, all these different topics of your home and your personal life if you're a Pisces rising, right? And so you could be thinking about changing homes, moving homes, moving to a different location, changing the environment of your home somehow, changing the dynamics in your home somehow, right? And or really learning about how to kind of change the energy or change the vibe of your, your home, like feng shui or something like that, right? So those are some things that you could also really be seeing come up. But on top of that, we also are going to have uh, some other things happening in terms of your 12th house and your second house with Saturn's last like uh, last final square with Uranus. So we've been going through this for a few years now. So this is nothing like super new, but this is the last square. So it can bring up some tension regarding where you want to feel more financially free, more liberated in terms of, um, I'm sorry, not financially free, but more free in terms of your environment, your local environment, the things that are going on around you. Like, and I really do feel like, you know, maybe you want a little bit more freedom in terms of your location like maybe you want to work remote maybe you want to travel more you know like something like this um so those are some of the things that could be coming up but i really see you wanting more freedom in your day-to-day -day life in some way shape or form so so yeah that's what you could see coming up there and other than that pisces i just really think that this is a month so so much about where you feel not either seen appreciated uh or you know, whatever the case may be for the things that you do for others, right? And so you really need to watch this this month and you may need to uh, kind of reflect on certain standards that you have in terms of your relationships with other people, in terms of your relationships with maybe like a significant other, in terms of, you know, partnerships, contracts, deals, negotiations, things like this. I would say with Mercury going retrograde, it's probably not a time to do something new regarding a contract or a deal. It's probably more of a time on reflecting or going back to certain things, revolving those topics, but not a good time to start something brand new, right? Uh, to, you know, completely decide that, you know, you uh, want a business partner and it's like brand new, right? Like fresh out of the gate. So it's kind of like a time of, of really reflecting on what you value and what you truly want in terms of your connections with others and how to go about standing for that and getting that, right? But also on top of it, with all this energy in your seventh house, this could be a time where you may become kind of critical of others. And so you need to watch that or where you could feel others are kind of becoming critical of you, right? Uh, or where maybe your partner is the one doing a lot of sacrificing and you feel it's a little bit unfair and so you wanna give back, right? So it really just depends, um, but you could be noticing it either way, like either with you or the people in your life, right? And so, but this really is about like what, what would help things like what small little fixes could help things 
work so much better. It could make the world of difference in terms of your connections, your relationships with others. And that simply may just be setting new standards in terms of your friendships, in terms of your relationships, setting new boundaries, being very discerning um, about where you put your time and energy and who you give your time and energy to, uh, where you need to take a step back and like rest and, and do things for you versus where you need to put your energy into your relationships and helping others and doing things for others, etc. So that's what I'm seeing for you this month, Pisces. Hopefully this resonates. Definitely let me know down below if this does resonate, if this was helpful. I would really, really appreciate your feedback as always. If you would like more from me and to keep up with me, definitely follow my social medias down below. Uh, I have all of my programs, my astrology course, readings, etc. all down below that you can check out. I love you Pisces and I will uh, see you guys in the next one. Alrighty, Aries Risings, here is your September horoscope for the month ahead. So Aries, you have Mercury in your seventh house and then uh, the Sun and Venus moving through your sixth house. So with this, Mercury is going to go retrograde this month in your seventh house. So there will be a ton of relationship matters coming through the coming to the surface, not through the surface, but coming to the surface that may need to be addressed where things don't feel fair or equal in terms of the relationships within your life. Uh, you may be reflecting on certain relationships. A lot of the times, if there's been a breakup, there could be like a, a reharmonizing, especially as your seventh house is Libra. There could be people that you used to be in relationships coming back from the past. There could be contracts, negotiations, things like that. I kind of just talked about this similarly with Pisces because Mercury is going to be retrograding back into their seventh house as well um, eventually and it will be retrograding back into your sixth house but it will start in your seventh house so this is really like okay what are the dynamics going on within your relationships and do they feel fair and this is a little bit more too than just like a romantic intimate relationship a marriage etc but this can be any significant relationship in your life so where are things not feeling all the way equal or where do we need to see something from a different angle where do we need to make certain decisions where do we need to maybe speak our truth in terms of relationships where are we not seeing the other person's side or where are they not seeing our side things like this so things like this can come up in terms of mercury uh being in your seventh house going retrograde in your seventh house these can be important conversations where you may need to find a middle ground where there may need to be a compromise you know libra wants to compromise. It wants to find that middle ground where everybody can kind of come to an agreement, come to harmony, right? Like um, where it's not just one-sided, right? But it's fair and it's unbiased and it's, it's, it's actually equal, right? And so these are the kinds of things that you could be seeing coming up in your relationship if you're not already in the month of September. Now, on top of that, you may have some work things coming in with this too or some day-to-day -day activity things coming in like we're health right with virgo being your sixth house of health work your day-to-day -day routines the tasks that you do on a day-to-day -day base basis the things that you manage on a day-to-day -day basis to be in good shape or to keep yourself in you know a place of being organized in your life these things are coming up as well and could somehow be also influencing some of this relationship stuff or have something to do with some of the relationship situations that arise with all of this sixth house energy because mercury also rules your sixth house so this is really a time of getting really you know really into your day-to-day -day routines where do you need to get kind of back into your your routines where do you need to kind of get back into the things that need to be done on a realistic grounded level on a day-to-day -day basis right and the smallest little shift can make the world of difference you know venus is in your sixth house too so you're going to find that you're more enjoying uh being in a schedule or having the to-do list or rearranging your routine in some way or adding one new little thing in that makes things run better right uh and so you could be finding as well that you're learning new skills because mars is in your third house and so you could be you know finding a lot of new interest developing a lot of curiosity about new things seeing things in new ways learning about new different things practicing new things but this is really about you know uh finding unique not really unique but finding practical ways of of working in your day-to-day -day life that run 
thing that make things run better right and so but somehow this could also be affecting your relationships you know maybe you are you know very very focused on work projects or you have like a really busy life right now and you could be very busy with mars in your third there could be a lot of errands a lot of tasks a lot of projects a lot of you know work stuff going on or you could be hot you could have a you know a health routine that's pretty rigorous right and so with all of that though this could somehow maybe be taking you away from your relationships and causing you know a little bit of uh disharmony within your relationships where maybe there needs to be a conversation Maybe you need to reflect on certain things. Maybe your partner needs to reflect on certain things, right? So these are some of the things that you could be seeing coming up. You could be also like learning new skills and practicing new things, you know, learning new ways to improve your day-to-day -day life and the things that you do on a day-to-day -day basis. Um, and so that's really what I see coming up for you in the month of September Aries for the most part, right? So other than that though, you know, we also have this final square happening between Uranus and Saturn from your 11th to your second house. So you've been really trying to find ways of leaning into more freedom and liberation financially with abundance, with money, with income, with what you have, right? Your, like your needs and, and what you wanna have, what you wanna possess in this life. And you've been really wanting more freedom and liberation there. You've really like possibly switched things up, found unique avenues of, you know, upgrading this area of life. And, uh, you know, with Saturn in your 11th, there could be a lot of maybe collective, worldly, societal, uh, you know, issues uh, that may be affecting this in some way, or you may be looking at certain things happening in the world or in society or whatever as a restriction or something kind of restricting restricting you or weighing heavy on you in terms of your finances or in terms of money in some way. And so this is the last final square of this where uh, you are, you know, where there could actually be a massive breakthrough with this, where there could actually be uh, a massive, you know, upgrade with this where you finally move out of this old conditioning right saturn and 11 and the 11th i kind of think of like uh societal conditioning in, in some way right or social conditioning in some way that's really maybe holding you back from experiencing the breakthroughs and upgrades and and you know uh freedom that you want to experience in terms of financially and and all of that so this could be you know coming up this month in september as well you could see some of that coming up this month as well and so Basically, this is a month of how do you want to improve? How can you improve? What things, what small things can you change, rearrange, take out, you know, add that can make the world of difference in improving your quality of life, improving your day to day routines, improving your health right um those are the kinds of things you know with mars and gemini in your third maybe you start wanting to you know go on runs around your neighborhood in the morning right and that can improve your health now another thing is you want to be very careful with burnout this month aries with mars in your third and all of this virgo energy uh you could be putting like a lot of energy and focus towards things going on on a day-to-day -day basis certain errands just a lot of busyness like you could be getting a lot of phone calls a lot of emails a lot of events a lot of you know like your schedule could feel like like really full right now but you also have these things that need improving in your day-to-day -day routine that could make a lot of difference right and that could really help you feel more at ease and bring more harmony uh into your into your day-to-day -day routines right um you could be burning yourself out with all this busyness and you know then your health needs your focus right then you need to to find a structure or a routine for your health to kind of mend that back together, right? So these are some of the, the different examples of how these energies can play out, how these different situations can play out. So definitely let me know down below, Aries, if this was helpful, if this resonated with you, and if you do see any of these things playing out in your life uh, in September, I would really, really love to hear your feedback as always. If you wanna book a reading or uh, learn astrology or take part in anything else I do, see the description below. Make sure to follow me on socials to keep up with everything else I do because I do way more than just astrology. And I will see you guys in the next one. Bye! Taurus darling, uh, welcome to your September 2022 astrology reading. So for the month of September Taurus, there is a lot in terms of you rebalancing your life in order to add more of what you want and what you desire in your life. Uh, especially if you are a Taurus rising, this is going to resonate a little bit more. But 
this is a month where we are in Virgo season. Virgo is your fifth house. This is about what you love, what you desire, what what your where your heart finds its joy in your life. Like what are your passions? What make you feel good? What feels like a child like what feels childlike to you, right? The fifth house for that reason also rules like creation, creativity, children, fertility, sex, right? So these are some other topics that you could see come up in the month of September, but right now it's like where can you get back to that inner child? Where can you get back to you know things that you love to do maybe you love to craft maybe you love to you know learn new skills or apply skills that you already have you know maybe you love to make different things right and you haven't been doing that and this is a month to really add more of that fun more of that joy back into your life and to find a way to balance it in your day-to-day -day life because mercury is going to go retrograde in your sixth house right and so this is going to be a rebalancing uh reflecting on work and your day-to-day duties, your day-to-day -day tasks, your day-to-day -day routines, your day-to-day -day responsibilities, your how you take care of yourself and your health on a day-to-day -day basis. So you're really going to be reflecting on these things this month as Mercury goes retrograde. But on top of that, we also have Mars and another Mercury sign in your second house. So something I really see with this is that you want to have fun. You want to do the exciting things. You want to add more of what you love into your life. But Mars and Gemini, um, could be making you a little bit like like really stimulated in terms of spending money or finances or something along those lines. You could be feeling like, do I have the money for this or do I not have the money for this? Or you could be spending on uh, a lot of like random things that you don't need. So I would also be careful of that. Like anything that piques your your interest or your curiosity, you could be like, yeah, you know, unless you have it like that, then that's, that's awesome. But with Mars being in Gemini, it's going to make squares over to these planets moving through Virgo in your fifth house. So there could be kind of like a push and pull here between what you have uh, financially or resources in turn and also what you desire and what you want, right? And so there could be kind of a challenge here with that or an issue that comes up with that where maybe you are, you know, spending on a lot of different things or you're trying to, maybe you're, you're putting in, you know, energy to create a new, uh, a new stream of income or something. Uh, and, but at the same time, you're also wanting to do the things you love. You're wanting to craft or you're wanting to do the things that bring you joy, that bring, that spark creativity, you know? And so those are some of the examples or ways that you could be seeing this energy come up this month. So with this, this as well, I really think that this could also be a time where you are just, you're getting back to what you love and you know, what you're, what you're good at, like what is important to you and your priorities and uh, what you personally value rather than what other people uh, think that you should do or what other people expect you to do, etc. So this is like, you know, because the North Node's also in your sign. So this is also really coming up for you where, you know, you are letting go of a lot of past toxic traits in terms of relationships you are really discovering a lot of past fears and stuff in terms of relationships. And with the North Node in your sign, you're really moving towards this new relationship with yourself. You're really learning you're really learning how to value yourself. You're learning how to find that stability within and to find that consistency within, to find that pleasure and harmony within um, yourself. Not that you can't um, experience that in relationships, but you're really learning how to find that stability within you, right? And how to be your own unique individual self and be authentic to who you are, regardless of what other people think, what the world thinks, etc. right? So with that being said, we are also finishing up the last and final square between Saturn and Uranus this month. Saturn's been in your 10th house, really, you know, kind of putting in the boot camp, <laughs> putting in the, uh, you know, drill sergeant energy in terms of your career, your life goals, really making you think like long term and making you think about what, you know, what's really going to be worth it in terms of your future, in terms of your your career, you know, this could also have over the last couple of years uh, played out in ways of you kind of having, you know, bumping heads with authority, bumping heads with authority figures, uh, seeing kind of the corruption or the restriction of the world and society and, you know, things like that, but also 
it's possibly made you very serious in terms of your long-term goals, in terms of what you want out of life, in terms of where you're headed in life. You know, you've probably gotten really, really serious about that and started seeing things from a more serious standpoint um, and a more realistic and rational standpoint as well. But with that being said, you know, with Saturn squaring Uranus this last time from your 10th to your first house, it's also really put in, you know, this challenge on, okay, who am I and how do I be myself in terms of this really conditioned heavy, dark world in society at times, right? Um, how can I express my authentic self? How can I express my truth? How can I express my freedom? How can I be free in a world that, you know, is so, um, you know, in, 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 in terms of your how you're perceiving the world and in terms of the situations you've had, um, in terms of authority, the world at large, your future, your goals, your career, etc. right? And so these are some issues that you've likely seen come up off and on over the last couple years. And this is something that you could be seeing come back up in September for the final time, where maybe you have this this major breakthrough in the sense of, okay, now I know how to be myself, how to express myself authentically, how to own my truth, how to embrace my truth, while also, you know, still going for what I want in my professional life or still, you know, doing what I want in terms of the world, in terms of long term, in terms of what I want for my life, you know, where I see myself going, you know, in terms of, you know, my path in life and what I want to build towards, towards my long-term goals, et cetera, and the things that I want to achieve and have in my life, right? And so this is really organizing your priorities in a way where you can have that, right? Where you can really start sorting out what's really, really important to you, especially with Mars in your second as well, because you're really going through, you know, kind of shifting through all the different information and all the different things in your life and seeing where do you want to put your energy? What is really important to you? And, you know, yes, working hard towards the things that you want in life can be important, but if you're not stopping to enjoy the moment, if you're not stopping to smell the roses, if you're not enjoying the journey, right, then it's it's kind of really boring, right? Like if you're if you're doing some kind of artwork and you're hating the whole process of artwork and you're only like freaking out about the end result and only worried about the end result, and that's going to be a pretty, you know, that, that's going to be pretty miserable to do, right? And so that's kind of what I see here. It's like, where can you maybe slow down a little bit and get into your reality and get into what you enjoy. Maybe you enjoy going on nature walks and you haven't went in a while. Maybe you enjoy spending time in nature and you haven't been doing that, right? Because you've been working hard and doing all the things, right? And it's like, where can you lean back into those little things that that you enjoy, that make the world of difference, right? Maybe that meal that you love that you haven't had the time to cook in forever. Maybe that, you know, nature trail you love to go on, but you haven't had the time, right? This is where those things can really come up and add just this next level of harmony back into your life this month. So that is what I'm seeing for you, Taurus. Definitely let me know down below if that resonated. I would really, really love to hear your feedback. And if you could live, leave a comment for me, that it would really mean a lot to me. If you don't already Ready, make sure you follow me on my social medias to keep up with me and everything that I do or at least sign up for my emailing list um, also if you'd like to learn astrology I have an astrology course you can get it down below or if you'd like to get an astrology reading I do those as well you can get those down below I also offer a lot of other different programs classes etc so see all that down below I love you Taurus and I will see you guys in the next one bye Gemini darling so Gemini September for you is about like rampages. You are likely on a rampage with Mars in your sign. You are just like ready to do it, right? Like you are just ready to do it all. <laughs> you have all the oomph, all the motivation, all the ambition, all the direction, all the force, all of the energy, and it's just like channeling through you, right? Not to mention that we have all this Virgo energy in your fourth house. So you are likely doing a, a, a lot of, you know, fall cleaning, organizing, rearranging in the home, uh, just getting a lot of shit done, right? Um, especially after, you know, like last, uh, like la last month where it was Leo season 
And that was a little bit more about like, you know, going out on the town, maybe going to different events, concerts, performances, etc. hanging out with friends, exploring and all of that. And now we're moving into this energy that is a little bit more internal. It's a little more, bit more private and personal because it's your home life. It's your foundation. It's your nest. Like what needs to be organized, rearranged and, and really kind of gotten ready here in some way with your, with your home, right? So this is a month where you could find yourself being a little bit more private, uh, a little bit more of a homebody, or even just there's some energy or situations that are coming up that are a little bit more home focused, right? This is like home base time, right? And then plus with Mars in your sign, you're just getting shit done, <laughs> sun, like you are just getting it all done. And so this is a really cool energy with Mars in your sign, you know? You do just wanna be careful though, because this can lead to you just kind of saying shit, you know, like, yeah, some things that you may need to say, right? Uh, maybe you're asserting yourself more. Maybe you're not as scared to, to put yourself out there. You know, maybe you're feeling more confident. Maybe you're hitting the gym. Maybe you're, you know, exercising or, or picking up a sport or something, especially with like Libra and um, Mercury retrograde in your, in your fifth house in Libra, but like you're doing different things, right? This is really about taking action in, in areas where you may not usually be taking action, right? But you do wanna just watch out because you could have a little bit of word vomit, right? Like you could just be, you know, just like throwing daggers with your words very easily at this time. Uh, so you do want to watch out for that. But other than that, this is amazing. I think, I think this is like, I love Mars in the first because it's like, fuck yes, I am getting it on. I am going to go do what I normally don't. <laughs> I am going to use this energy and just like have fun with it. Right? Like, so yeah, like get shit done, you know, really get shit done. Uh, hopefully you're feeling that motivation hopefully you're feeling that spiciness that edginess you know in your sign this can be a really beautiful energy to get so many different things done especially since you're a gemini right like you're mutable so you there's like a little bit of everything going on right and so you can do like a lot of little bits of different things a little bit of everything you know like just a finger in every pie right like just get it just do it all right like but this can be a really interesting energy to learn more about yourself right too because it really is like you know putting you out there more it's really uh putting more of an assertive energy behind you and so you assert yourself and you lead in a more powerful way or this could put you in a leadership position that normally you'd be like i don't even understand because normally this wouldn't happen maybe or something right like so mars is really giving you that extra oomph, that extra direction that extra force behind you and so use it you're gonna have months of it right like because it's gonna retrograde in your sign and so it's really gonna be a, a time of like discovering new aspects of yourself new traits about yourself and you know how to assert yourself with confidence and how to take on those mars like qualities which you know are masculine and, and gemini is a masculine sign too but like are more assertive and confident and fiery and like, you know, direct and, you know, powerful too and passionate, right? Like where can you take on those more Martian qualities? And you're probably already know that you're, you're naturally doing that. You don't even really have to try just really noticing, you know, where you're doing it and, and how you're doing it and, and where you can gain the confidence to start doing this more once Mars isn't in your first house anymore, you know, which won't be till like later next year and like the spring because Mars is going to be in your sign for a long time. So you got plenty of time to like figure this out, work this out, use this energy. But yeah, I just think it's really cool. And I'd love to know how you're feeling that energy already. Right. So anyways, other than that, Gemini, not too much going on in September. Mercury is retrograding, but it's your fifth house. So it's a pretty cool, it's a pretty cool spot in the chart, you know, because it's, it's, it's where you find your joy, right? And with Libra here, this can definitely be like dating and hanging out with friends and, you know, doing things with other people and, and doing fun things with others. And so with Mercury retrograding here, you know, this could be getting back to things that you love to do, right? Whether it's with others or whether it's just for you, you know, just getting back to those things that you love to do that maybe you haven't done in a while, right? Getting back to the things that, um, that really bring joy to your heart that you really do truly love and that bring a sense of balance and harmony to your life 
too, right? And so, and for some of you, this could be, uh, you know, if you're dating, which I wouldn't necessarily recommend dating during a Mercury retrograde because a lot of the times once Mercury goes direct, it can be like, oh, never mind. It can be like a, a change, right? Like a shift, a shift in perspective and uh, changing your mind, right? So do be careful with that. <laughs> but this is good to just like experiment with like dating um, and just kind of doing a little bit at a time, right? And so it is good for that. And uh, other than that, yeah, you just like Virgo season to your fourth. So this is really getting back to your your foundations and organizing your foundation, your personal life, and and just making sure that that everything kind of behind the scenes in your world, everything internally in your world is working effectively. And if it's not, what little small things do you need to fix to get it running accordingly again, right? And so this can play out in terms of rearranging your house, like I said. This can play out in terms of getting rid of stuff that you don't need anymore. This can play out in terms of, you know, um, maybe doing some self-improvement, you know, emotionally or, you know, uh, maybe getting your affairs in order in terms of family obligations or whatever the case may be, right? It's really bringing up that home, family, personal life kind of energy. And so, so yeah, that is basically what I'm seeing for you, Gemini. Like I said, not too much going on this month. We do have that final Saturn Uranus square from your uh, ninth house of higher education and travel and higher thought forms, philosophies, and, you know, thinking big picture, your belief systems, your worldviews, uh, squaring Uranus in your 12th house of your subconscious and what's going on kind of behind the scenes and things like that. So there could be uh, you know, some themes of those, the, some things like that, <laughs> those two areas of life kind of coming up here, you know, maybe some subconscious breakthroughs in your beliefs or uh, some conditioning even, you know, Saturn in the ninth, I think could be very much about conditioning or the beliefs of authorities that feel like uh, like that feel like they're weighing heavy on you or um, maybe some restrictions in terms of education or travel or something along those lines. So let me know uh, if any of this uh, resonates with you, Gemini. I'd really, really love to hear what you have to say and hear your feedback. Thank you guys so, so much for watching this. If you would like more from me, check out my description below and I will see you guys in the next one. Cancer, darling, uh, welcome to your September 2022 astrology reading. I'm so excited and I'm really so interested in the astrology for you this month, Cancer, because it looks very, very interesting. Uh, it looks a little sneaky, a little secretive, I'm not going to lie. You know, Mars is in your 12th, so this is definitely bringing up things that are going on behind the scenes, bringing up things that you know, you may need to cut out of your life or you may need to break through in some way, like uh, behind the scenes or subconscious challenges, uh, this could be bringing up, you know, with this. So this can sometimes like, you know, be bad patterns that you need to break, like bad habits that you need to break, old cycles that you need to kind of break through and face, uh, you know, subconscious programming, right, that you need to kind of face, like, you know, subconscious habits, subconscious patterns, subconscious cycles, self-sabotaging cycles and patterns that come up that you need to like face and break through and like, you know, all of those types of things. And so this could really be bringing up those topics, especially to do with the mind though, since Mars is in Gemini. So this definitely could be, you know, you could actually use this energy in a really beautiful way. If you put a lot of energy and focus towards maybe studying more on the mind, right? If you were seeing some things come up in your life, especially if you're cancer rising, like maybe old mental habits, old mental patterns, um, you know, maybe even mental disturbances, like maybe you, you know, feel a little bit, like maybe it brings up old habits of feeling a little bit like chaotic in your mind or like old ways that you used to think that are just not helpful or the, that are just pointless. Like this would be a really great way to use this energy if you use it towards focusing your energy on learning about this, like learning about your mind, learning about how to heal your mind, right? Like learning about how to heal these old mental cycles or these old patterns or old habits, whatever they are, even if they're not to do with the mind, you know, just whatever is coming up for you that can be a little bit behind the scenes or subconscious or like old things coming up that need to be put an end to, right? That, that need to be on the chopping block, like that you need to cut out of your life. Like Mars cuts things out. Mars is about challenges. And so that's why I'm talking in this way, because these are some of the ways that this could play out. But 
let me know down below if those are some of the ways that you're seeing them play out or how you're seeing this play out because I would really be interested to know for Cancer Risings. But on top of that, I also get kind of the feel that this could be bringing up some behind the scenes stuff in terms of like friendships and like day to day stuff that's happening because we also have you know, the sun and Venus moving through Virgo, the third house and the third house can somewhat deal with the mind and the mental patterns and the, the people, places and things that we kind of are involved with on like more of like a local and day to day basis. So this really a lot of the times when, you know, third house transits come up, I often see, you know, more events coming up, my friends inviting me to more things, you know, um, you know, little short trips that happen or uh like new places that i discover that are in my local area you know like things like this so um it can really kind of just be like the places that you're visiting that are around you the the, the situations events and things that you're doing um and that are kind of around you that aren't that far from you and the people that you know are around you this can be your neighbors your cousins family and friends you know and so really with this Virgo energy and then Mars being in your 12th, there could be some things coming up where these two are connected. Like maybe you're invited to something and, you know, maybe there is something going on, you know, like subconsciously or like behind the scenes or like one of these old habits or patterns that we talked about that comes up and kind of challenges you going to this thing that you were invited to. Or maybe you're hanging out you know, with friends, but you're kind of sinking into like old behaviors or you're, you have self-sabotaging things coming up or there could even be, you know, either some behind the scenes stuff happening in terms of some of the people you're hanging out with, etc. So the, these are all just different examples. They're not all going to be true for each one of you. So just take that in mind. I don't want to like freak you out or anything because it really doesn't have to be uh, you know, a huge thing. Like I said, there are beautiful ways to use this energy. The 12th house can be so deeply healing if we're willing to use it in a healing way. If we're willing to seclude ourselves a little bit, to focus our energy inward more, to, to focus our energy on healing and to the things that are going to support us rather than bring us down, right? And with Mars in your 12th, you can also feel a little bit less energized or a little bit, you know, more energized towards like things that are a little bit more behind the scenes, like retreating, seclusion, you know, things like that. And Mars rules your 10th house of career. And so this could also be playing into this as well, you know, or have something to do with this as well. So, so yeah, Cancer, those are like the, the big things that I think I really see for you this month. But on top of that, uh, we also have the final Saturn Uranus square happening from your eighth house to your 11th house. And so this is really bringing up finances and where you're going in life in terms of your finances or where you want to go in life in terms of your finances, your financial goals. You know, you've likely been working on this like the last couple of years with Saturn moving through your eighth. You've likely been buckling down and getting really serious on your finances and your financial exchanges debts, you know, paying off debts or getting serious about money that you owe or money that's owed to you and where you're going financially and just really securing yourself in terms of finances and in terms of shared finances and resources. So finances and resources that you share with others or, you know, that you have with others, like if you're married and you and your partner, you know, share certain things, right? Like that would come up here as well, you know, where your partner's finances, etc., could come up here as well. So that is kind of like Saturn in the eighth has on and off the last couple of years been squaring Uranus in your 11th house of friends, communities, like-minded people, you know, different groups and, uh, you know, social networks that you belong to, networking, marketing, you know, things like that, where you fit in and your place in the world and the people that, you know, different friend groups and things like that. And so these two areas of finances, and friends and groups and communities and, and your social life and stuff like that could definitely be coming up as well where um you know like you could be the, the 11th house can also rule like a company or things that you gain from your career in some way or that help you in terms of your career and so these are some things that could come up there could be 
you know, there could have been a conflict on and off the last couple of years between these two areas of life somehow. Um, and that could be really finalizing starting this month in September, which is really amazing. So because this is the final T-square. So this is like the last of the lessons we're learning from this square. And, you know, we're really finally integrating and, and breaking through them, right? Like we've dealt with this. We know, we know, you know, we, we've been here before and now we're kind of like really finally like moving on, upgrading and, and you know, learning the lessons, like I said. So, so yeah, it'll be interesting to see how that plays out cancer, but I really feel like, you know, this month for you is kind of like, what do I have the energy for? What is healthy and good for my mind? And what isn't that? Ooh, that's it right there. What is healthy and good for your mind? And what isn't this is about being very picky and choosy and discerning about where you put your energy, right? With Mars in your 12th, like I said, you may not have a normal amount of energy or your normal amount of energy, or you may feel more drawn to sleep more, or you may feel a little bit more exhausted. And this could be in part due to the things that you're doing on a day-to-day -day basis, uh, your routines on a day-to-day -day basis, the environments that you're in on a day-to-day -day basis, or your mind, how you're thinking, your energy, what's going on in terms of you know, uh, what you're thinking about and how you think and, and your kind of also subconscious habits and things like that. And so really exploring these realms would be a beautiful, 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 beautiful use of this energy. Uh, and, and it would help you, I think, you know, that way, if there was something that was challenging that came up with these areas, if you dove into it, we're like, okay, like, let me develop a curiosity about this instead of like a huge fear and try to fight it, right? Because that's the other side of Mars, shadow side, that can make this a lot more difficult as if we resist, if we fight, you know, if we keep trying to push away at all of the tasks and stuff that we need to do, yet we're exhausted or, you know, something's telling us to go within, to rest, to, to take a vacation, to, to retreat, you know, to seclude ourselves. And we keep trying to do, 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 do then yeah, like it's, you know, eventually we're gonna start having different symptoms of that, right? So listen to yourself, listen to, you know, how your, how your energy is feeling, like be aware of what you're thinking, be aware of your environments and stuff this month. And yeah, that is what I have for you, Cancer. Definitely let me know down below if this resonated with you. I would really, really love to hear your feedback. Please make sure that you follow me on social media. Uh, all my socials are linked down below. If you would like a reading, if you would like to learn astrology, uh, if you would like to participate in any of my classes, programs, etc., again, see the description below. Thank you guys for watching, and I will see you in the next one. Bye. Leo, darling, uh, my fellow Leo Risings, welcome to your September 2022 astrology forecast for the month ahead wow like wow 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 i am also a leo rising i would love to know how has your last few months been as a leo rising because holy shit like am i right i would love to know because wow <laughs> if you're a leo rising a lot's been going on okay things could have felt pretty unstable the last month or two uh with just all of the transits that we've had going on you know everything moving through leo activated a shit ton of other stuff in our chart in our seventh house and our tenth house you know like we've been going through so much in terms of what we want for our lives what we want for our future reinventing our careers our professional lives our brand our self-image our public image you know we have also possibly you know i know a lot of leo risings in august went through an identity crisis you know like there was this massive pulling back like even possible isolation like self-rediscovery happening for a lot of leo risings and then on top of that, you know, we we were also dealing with a lot of relationship stuff coming up. You know, what do we want long term in terms of relationships? Are the relationships in our lives sustainable, right? Or are we just settling from the past? Are we just, you know, kind of doing what's easy, doing what's comfortable because things feel hard, right? What do we want long term in terms of our relationships, in terms of our lives? And then also on top of that, the South Node in Scorpio in our fourth house, what kind of childhood shit do we need to let go of right like we're really seeing like if you're a leo rising you're really seeing where you can progress in your life and where you hold yourself back and that's not fucking easy right because you see where you hold yourself back it's like yes you can see your potential you can see what you're capable of but it's 
easy to see that and then kind of fall into shame of why am I not there? What's going on? Why am I, why do I still have all of this past karma, this past baggage, like these old behaviors, these old self-sabotaging behaviors, old family trauma, ancestral patterns, like stuff going on, chaos going on in the home life, you know, like this is really about digging deep and letting go of the past and letting go of our fears that keep us anchored and stuck in our lives right now. This is what this year is about for Leo Risings and it is major, you know, because we do want to progress in terms of our lives, our future, and the the things that we want to fulfill. We want to have a life of pleasure with Taurus and our 10th house. So we want to have a life of abundance and pleasure and the things that fulfill us, the things that feel good in the world and to experience the things that feel good in the world. But August was such a month, man, because all of that stuff got activated again. And it really kind of, I think, forced a lot of Leo risings or even Leo placements to really take a step back and look at themselves and rediscover who they are and really look at their identity and the person that they're being and what they're showing up as in the world and, and you know, what's important to, you know, what's important to you, right? Like as what's important to you on a soul level and who are you? right? And because if we don't have that, then we don't have anything else, right? Because any decisions that we make from that place of confusion within ourselves are confused decisions, right? If we're not in alignment with ourselves, then we're making unaligned decisions. It's kind of like if, if you're a creative person, yet, you know, you've, you've been because of conditioning other people around you, whatever, you know, you've kind of went out and worked your ass off and hustled your ass off when really naturally, like you're a softer creative go with the flow kind of person and that's just not who you are right it's like making that decision is coming from you not really being clear and solid within yourself right and so nothing else in our life matters if we don't know who the fuck we are and that's what a lot of the last several weeks i think have been about for us as leo risings if we are not solid and clear within ourselves even if you weren't doing some identity searching even if you weren't you know trying to rediscover yourself on some level it was it's been a time frame about who are you right and getting back to who you are or getting back to your you know even maybe you discovered old ways or old traits of yours that you hadn't really expressed or that you forgot about you know and it's like we have to embody that we have to allow that to lead because everything in our life falls apart when that's not the leading energy when we're not clear on who we are right until you know who you are nothing else matters until you're clear on who you are nothing else matters because if you don't know yourself anything from that place anything that comes from that is you not being you right and so you're making decisions that aren't you and you're energetically not being you right and so it is just so 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 important to really know who we are and to really like you know to to really be solid on that and to really embody that right and so that's really where we're coming into september at because that's where we've been you know and so now we're coming into september and we're like okay I'm a little bit more clear about who I am or I'm still in the process of figuring out what's next. What's next is priorities, our priorities. What's important to us, right? What do we need to to add to our lives, right? What? Where do we feel stable, secure, safe? Where do we need to meet our needs? What are our priorities? Are we sticking to our priorities? What's important? What in this earthly material world is actually a priority right now you know taking one thing at a time and so this is really what virgo season is about for leo it's about getting back to what's important to us what we need you know what our finances money security our values the things that really really are important for us to feel safe and secure right and so this can be material things this can be inner things right do you feel safe and secure within yourself do you feel stable within yourself do you feel abundant within yourself? Do you have that inner strength to really secure your secure you no matter what your inner or your exter, external reality is saying or showing you, right? And so that is what this month is about. It's about getting really deeply secure within ourselves and getting back to what really matters to us right? Getting our priorities in check. Are we spending our time and energy on things that don't matter? Where are we 
you know, doing things that are just, that we don't, that aren't really important, that aren't really supporting our needs, that aren't really supporting our values, that aren't really supporting us and where we want to go. And, you know, this can also be about money that's owed to us or money that we owe to others, you know, really rearranging things in a way to where things work better for us and our lives. You know, this could be budgeting, this can be really working on our finances, this can be, you know, really rearranging our priorities, organizing our priorities, you know, really getting critical about where we spend our time and energy, money, etc. Where the energetic, the important energetic exchanges within our lives and really organizing our needs, you know, like what, what do we need and what do we actually want, you know? And so that is really what September is about for Leo risings. But on top of that, <laughs> we have the final Uranus Saturn square happening from our seventh to our 10th house. We've been dealing with this for the last couple of years. And so this is kind of like a grand finale of sorts of a lot of soul searching we've done in terms of relationships and a lot of soul searching we've done in terms, I don't know why the word soul searching keeps coming up, but that's just what's coming up right now. But in a lot of soul searching in terms of our career, where we're headed in life, our direction in life, you know, our public image, uh, you know, authority figures, our long term goals, what we want to achieve while we're here on earth, our legacy, what we want to leave behind. Like these are big life, big picture kind of kind of things. And we've really been thinking about these things and working on these things now for the last couple of years, you know, with Uranus in our 10th, we've been really reinventing ourselves and, you know, wanting to make revolutionary change or a major impact in, in our lives and what we're doing and really, you know, be in a career that enables our authenticity and individuality and uniqueness, you know? And so with Uranus and Saturn making their final square, this goes into our personal relationships as well. You know, our, our committed personal relationships and where, like, if we see a future with these relationships, if these relationships are what we want long term, and they don't just have to be romantic or intimate relationships, this is any significant relationship in your life, any significant partnership in your life, right? And so this is like, you know, what do I want long term? Where do your future goals and the relationships that you're in kind of conflict each other or just not vibing, right? Like, and, and so this is really having a breakthrough in that area with this final square. And so there could be some finalized things coming up with this, you know, where you really kind of get to some kind of final breakthrough or final conclusion uh, with these two areas of life and instead of it being so up in the air and so unstable, right? There's just been a lot of instability uh, for Leo Risings. And so getting really clear on these two areas of life, I think can really, really help. And that's going to start coming in as we get like towards like the, the middle to end of September and into October, uh, there will be a lot of upgrades in terms of what you want out of life, where you see yourself going, your potential and your relationships. And like, are you ready to like really fucking upgrade in your life, Leo? Like that is really what you need to ask yourself. Like, are you ready to really go forward or do you keep wanting to hold on to your old fears, your old baggage, the past, like the, the trauma, the things that hold you back, right? And so that I think is what September is really leading up to and the rest of this year is really leading up to if you're Leo rising, like where, like, you know, all this 10th house energy, the North Moon in the 10th house, this is about really, really seeing what we're fucking capable of in the world and really also seeing on the flip side of that with the South Moon and Scorpio where we have shit just holding us back, right? Like we see this beautiful future laid out and then there's just this old shit that we have like skeletons in the closet, right? And it's like, we have to face that stuff in order to move forward. We have to face those fears. I know they're dark. I know they're scary. I know it's unknown. I know it's like, ah, uh, you know, a, a big thing for me is like, you know, that I've learned on my own healing journey is you get so used to carrying this shit around with you that you don't know how to live without it. And so it just becomes like an autopilot thing where you just resort back to it because it's easy and that's all you know and that's what's comfortable even though it's self-sabotaging af right even though it's keeping it's holding you back it's keeping you miserable right and so it's like we really are seeing where we have to get our emotional uh our emotional foundations in check where we really have to secure and clean out all the shit that's clogging our pipes that is keeping our our internal 
private, personal, emotional, familial foundations like unstable, right? Because there is a sense that you do, you are trying to build to this future. You are trying to build to this new life, to this new vision, to this huge potential, to see what you're really capable of, to, to build towards this life of pleasure. But you have this like murky, unstable, watery foundation with Scorpio in the fourth, right? And that has to be really sorted out, right? Because if not, then we, the foundation can't hold us and we end up you know, if we do achieve something, if we do go to that next level, we end up emotionally not being able to handle it and it become, we feel unstable and therefore we resort back again, right? And so we have to like unclog those fucking pipes, right? Like we have to. And so that is a major, major thing that 2022 has been about for us Leo Risings is like scarcity versus thriving in our life along with, you know, that's been kind of a collective theme, but also for Leo Risings, like, do we want to continue to live in this like lack scarcity energy or do we want to thrive? Do we want to do the things that we're capable of? Do we want to have a life of pleasure? Do we want to have a life of, you know, wealth, abundance, fulfillment, beauty, harmony, like all the things, right? Freedom with your honest and our intent. And so anyways, I keep getting off guard or off topic on the bigger picture over here as a Leo rising because I've been seeing a lot of these themes playing out. Uh, so it, it's always helpful if you're a Leo rising to get your horoscope from me because likely I know what's up. Um, anyway, so other than that, in September, we have Mars in our 11th. It's going to be making some squares to this Virgo energy. So there can be a lot of like back and forth in terms of friend groups, in terms of your social life, in terms of like-minded individuals in your life, like-minded people, certain groups that you're a part of, certain uh, social networks that you're a part of online, like a Facebook group or uh, you know, a certain course or class or something, right? And so this can kind of be coming up uh, as well, but it could somehow be conflicting with your finances, your money, like your, you know, your budgeting, etc. So you do want to kind of just be on the lookout for that. But yeah, Leo, like the, the main things this month, like I said, are your finances, what's important to you, your priorities, your values, really getting organized in this area, but also uh, this relationship versus future long-term career area as well, uh, where they're kind of conflicted. And so that's really what you want to kind of pay attention to. Mercury's retrograding in our third house as well in Libra. So this can definitely bring up some reflection on our friends, on, you know, events, uh, you know, different places, people, places, and things is what I call it with the third house. Like, uh, you do want to be careful. Like if you need anything done to your car, I would do it before Mercury retrograde, which is like, I want to say like on the 12th, but let me check really quick on the 10th. Sorry. Uh, I would do it before then. Cause once Mercury retrogrades, there could be some things that come up. Now, like you can do it after the 10th, but if you've been needing something done on your car, okay, with Mercury retrograde in the third house, do it, okay? Just freaking do it. <laughs> Mercury retrograde in the third house can bring up things with your car. Usually they're things that have needed to be done, but you hadn't done and now they're coming up. And it's like, and that could be an extra expense with all this energy in our house of finances and money. So you do want to watch out for extra expenses. You do want to watch out. Like you just want to have more of a grip on your finances. Be a little bit more tapped in. Be a little bit more uh, practical and grounded with your spending, with money in general. Like it doesn't, doesn't have to be from a place of like scarcity and lack and all of that, but just be, uh, you know, just be aware, right? Just be aware and know what's up with your shit, right? That's, that's what's important. You know, this can also be a month where you learn new skills that can make you money or where you are learning new skills just in general, but also learning uh, new streams of income or learning new ways of, of making money uh, in some way as well. So that could also come up. But anyways, uh, I'm going to do separate videos on the full moon and the new moon at the end of the month. So don't worry about that. Uh, but yeah, that is what I mainly see coming up for you, Leo, in the month of September. It's mainly about getting our shit together, basically. <laughs> getting our shit together, focusing on what's important, focusing on what really matters, getting back to the real world, getting, you know, practical about things and uh, really cleaning up 
you know, any areas that need to be cleaned up and uh, really coming back to earth focusing on what's important, our priorities, our money, our values, things like that. So I love you, Leo. Please, please let me know down below if this reading resonated with you. Feel free to come back to it throughout the month. I would really, really appreciate it if you would give me your feedback to, though down below. It's always helpful. And I really want to know anyway, how you guys have been experiencing this energy recently because I've had a crazy time with it the last couple of months. So I know life has just been crazy for me. So if you would like more from me, definitely see the description down below. I do programs. I have an astrology course. I do astrology readings. I do other spiritual programs and courses. So definitely make sure to keep up with me on socials. Uh, sign up for my email list if you aren't already. And also you can check out all the things that I do down below as well. And I will see you guys in my other videos.